What's going on folks? This is the first update for the Fantasy GM League that I am the commissioner of on the PlayStation 4. This video will catch you up to speed on everything going on in the league. We're going to start off breaking down each division and the win-loss records there. The AFC North is trash. That's all we're going to say. Cincinnati is the number two team in the league though by power ranking. So Cincinnati looks good. The rest of that division is trash. The Jaguars lead the AFC South with a pretty decent record. The AFC East is led by the Miami Dolphins, the sixth team in the power rankings in the league. We look pretty competitive. Every team looks pretty close, other than the Dolphins, of course. AFC West, pretty close. Every team is within one win of the other one. It's going to be a coin toss to see who comes out of that division. Detroit is the number three team in power rankings. They lead the NFC North. They don't have a loss. They got a tie, oddly enough. The NFC South is led by the Buccaneers, who are the fifth team in power rankings in the league. The rest of that division looks like a toss-up as well. The NFC East is led by the Giants. The Giants are fourth in power ranking. They look pretty good. Eagles look pretty trash over there, though. And the lone undefeated team in the league, the Seattle Seahawks. Now, let's look at this thing from a big perspective. Like I said, you can see the power rankings on your left. Seahawks, Bengals, Lions, Giants, Buccaneers, Dolphins. If I'm not mistaken, somebody told me during the draft that I was doing a trash job of drafting. Man, I don't know, man. I'm just the sixth best team in the league. But I don't really want to talk about the teams at the top. That's pretty self-explanatory. Let's jump down to these three teams on the bottom. The Great Patriot is the GM of the Browns. Cleveland fans hoped that the Great Patriot would come in and turn their franchise around. Instead, he is telling the fans to trust the process. We get a look at his season so far. He's had some games he was competitive in. They was competitive in this game against Cincinnati, who's one of the better teams in the league. When you go back through and look at the stats, I'm not really sure what's going on with Mariota. Looked like he may have got injured that game. Bryce Petty came out and threw a couple of passes to the wrong team. Uh, the running backs don't seem to be getting much traction out there. Then again, it's tough to run the football when you're behind all the time. I don't know. Like, Cleveland Browns fans, you guys can't even be happy about what's going on in the video game. Maybe it's just y'all destiny. Maybe you're just going to be bad forever. Can the Great Patriot turn this franchise around? Only time will tell. But right now, it looked like they, they cruising for the first pick in the draft. I don't know if that's what that man trying to do, but that's what it looks like. Now, we jump to another bad team in the league led by Shadow Zone 15. I'm talking about the Atlanta Falcons. This team is not good. But the funny thing is, the one win of the season is... They tried to drop a 50-piece on the Panthers. I don't know what happened in that game, so we're going to go and take a closer look. They clearly figured something out in this game. And Teddy Bridgewater was on fire. 375 through the air, 6 TDs, and no INTs. If that ain't bad enough, Zeke damn near gave him 100 on the ground for 5 a pop. I'm not sure why they can't put these types of games together week in and week out. I don't know if it's injuries. Look at this. Randall Cobb and T.Y. Hilton both had over 100 yards receiving. This was the type of game that I'm pretty sure the GM was expecting when he drafted this talent. Let's jump to our other really bad team, the Philadelphia Eagles. Their GM is Scruzzles. Scruzz came out the gate, got a win in week one. Now, he got a win against the Browns, and we know the Browns are winless. So, I don't know if we can give him credit for that. But if you look at the scoreboard, this team is competitive in a lot of these games. We're going to go back and look at their one win of the season. And you can see, even in that one, Ryan Tannehill and Mariota both was kind of, they was neck and neck out there. Nothing impressive on the running game. Bilal Powell did have a decent game. Nothing really impressive through the air. No 100-yard receivers. It was just two teams just battling to see who could be more mediocre. So when you see three really bad teams, it makes you want to go to the transaction log. See what these guys are doing. Are they trying to bring in some pieces? Are they trying to be better? Or are they just content with being bad and just selling these tickets? Just, just making the fans come out and see bad football. I don't know. Looking at the Browns, the Browns actually made a lot of deals early in the year. I guess I waited too long to record this stuff. You can't see it. But, man, let me tell you what we saw when we looked in the transaction log of the Eagles. The Eagles fighting over here, y'all. They trying everything in their power to make it work. They tried Clinton Haha -Ha over at outside backer. Uh, they moving halfbacks to wide receivers. I think they got some cheerleaders trying out for field goal kicker. It is all bad in Philadelphia. If you a fan of the Eagles, though, one thing you got to like is the fact that they out here trying. They signing people. They making moves. They making trades. They are trying to put a better product on the field. So far, it just hasn't worked out for them. I just saw a cornerback got changed to safety. Like, it's, it's all bad out there in Philly, fam. 
it is all bad. But we need to take a peek over here and see what Shadow is doing with the Atlanta Falcons. In real life, the Atlanta Falcons just went to the Super Bowl, had a great season that ended real bad, and that bad luck seemed to have followed these guys into the video game. You can see that they've been making some moves as well. Not as much though. Practice squad stuff was way back in preseason, so kind of looks like they just gonna cruise it out, see where things are going. Maybe he's got a game plan. I'm not really sure. Uh, you see, he's released some folks, signed some folks to the practice squad. They're trying to make some shake. Hell if I know. Let's move on to the next part of this update video, folks. It's time to see the league injury report because some of these teams probably would be good if they could put healthy guys on the field. And the injury bug has been alive and well, and he is biting people, fam. He is biting people. So let's get into it. Cleveland Browns, winless team, no injuries. I'm just saying, if you're a Browns fan, I don't know what you do. Tampa Bay is out there without their best running back. Look at these injuries, man. Some of these, oh my goodness, look at the Chargers. RG3 is out for 39 weeks with a broken femur. LeGarrette Blunt is out for the Chiefs. The Cowboys are all beat up. All beat up. Look at the Cowboys. No Derek Carr. No Juice Landry. No Bradley Roby. Oh my goodness. Cameron Artis Payne is out. Uh, oddly enough, I see an IR. They put Cameron Artis Payne on the uh, IR over there. So I'm just I'm just trying to see what's going on with these teams, man. Of course, your Cowboys are led by LaParis. His squad looked pretty bad. You know, Dolphins over here. We are playing without Dennis Pitta. Next man up mentality over here. The Eagles are beat up. They got two quarterbacks out. Tannehill and Barkley. They've also got Miles Jack that we just saw they moved to strong safety. He is injured. Ah, I don't know. Ay, ay, ay. Oh, hold up. We skipped somebody. Go back. Niners got Carson Wentz out. They've got a center and a quarterback. That's got to make things tough to move the football on offense. <laughs> the Giants got two defensive tackles out. Amendola's out. I'm telling you, man, these injuries are, are running rampant. And we got the injury settings on 30. So, I mean, we're not running with it crazy high. Jags got an offensive lineman out. Jets missing a center and a halfback. That's got to hurt. Partial PCL tear, ruptured disc. I mean, it's crazy stuff, too. Derrick Johnson is out for the Lions. Packers look pretty healthy, though. Okay. Panthers missing a backer. Patriots would be healthy. Would be healthy. Raiders are healthy. So, some of these teams got... They full lineup out there. They just not producing. A middle back and a center out for the Rams. I'm going to show y'all one thing. Hold on. Let's jump ahead. Now, that's not it. Amir Abdullah is also injured. Landry Jones is injured. He's not a starter anyway. Redskins look completely healthy. Saints. Shout out to my boy Stax Montana. He is missing a middle backer, a, a halfback, a tight end, and a left guard. Woo, they going to throw a party in four weeks when all those guys come back. Latavius Murray's out. They got a DT out. They got two halfbacks out. Duke Johnson is also out for the Seahawks. It's crazy, 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 man. The Texans are missing an offensive lineman. And look at this right here, folks. Uh, Achilles tear, 41 weeks of fractured kneecap, 19 weeks. The Tennessee Titans have gotten blindsided by the injury bug. I mean, it is crazy in Tennessee. 15 weeks fractured shoulder blade over there in Minnesota. We're going to go ahead and jump to the next section of the update video, folks. It's time to look at season stats. We're not going to go through everybody. On this first page, you can only see the top seven people, so we're only going to talk about the top seven people. We're going to start off looking at the AFC and the passing yards in the AFC. I don't know if you guys saw it, but Jameis Winston and the Miami Dolphins, he made it on that front page. When we look at TDs, Matthew Stafford leads the AFC in TDs. Sam Bradford leads the AFC in interceptions. No shock there. Jared Goff right there with him. Stafford there. Tom Savage is there. Matt Ryan, we see you. We see you. Sacks, I wanted to know who was not being protected. To my surprise, Stafford has been sacked damn near 30 times already. That is crazy. Carson Palmer has been sacked 27 times. When we go and look at the AFC Russian leaders, this shocked me. Thomas Rawls leads the AFC in Russian. Over 600 yards rushing, over four yards to carry. He's been in the end zone five times. Tevin Coleman, the Dolphins. We on that front page, fam, everywhere. Y'all say I can't drive. I want some apologies, damn it. Y'all said I can't drive. I, I'm just saying, I want to know what's up. Come over here, let's see. Fumbles, Adrian Peterson leads the AFC in fumbles. No shock there. 
broken tackles. I'm going to show you something crazy. The bottom of that front page is Marcus Mariota. He's got nine broken tackles. That's all I got to say about that. That's all I got to say about that. Rawls does lead the AFC in broken tackles. Probably not a kawinky dink that he leads him in rushing. We go over and look at the AFC receiving leaders. Things get crazy over here. Sammy Watkins looks good. If he can keep, you know, if you can keep him on the field, we know he's a beast. Kelvin Benjamin putting in work. Jeremy Macklin. Muhammad Sanu. Bebe. Demarius Thomas makes an appearance. We had some teammates up there. And Terrence Williams. Oh, and Travis Benjamin. The Dolphins. You know what I'm saying? That's just how we get down. No big deal. That's just how we get down. The first tight end you see in the AFC is Greg Olson. Keep that in mind. He wasn't in the... He wasn't on that front page, but he was the first non-wide receiver, you know, in the receiving yards. TDs over here, man. Crabtree. Uh, Quincy and Newa. I don't know if I'm saying his name right. And who, who the hell is this Wilson guy? Go down. Hold on. Let me see who this is. Go down. Forget it. Don't even worry about it. It was a bunch of people with six. You know what? Let's look at the defensive side of the AFC. This is where uh, I'm really proud of my GM skills. Now, we look at tackles. If you look at the AFC, notice everybody on that front page was a middle backer. Middle backers get it in Denzel Perryman. You know what I'm saying? Miami Dolphins. I drafted that guy. When you look at tackles for a loss, the first two people on the list are Miami Dolphins. Gerald McCoy, Big Vince Wilford. I told you guys it starts with the trenches. It starts with the defensive line. Y'all laughed at me. Y'all laughed. I want apologies in this comment section, y'all. I ain't player. I want to see it. When you go look at the AFC sack leaders, man, Jadavion Clowney ain't playing no games. Ten and a half. Ziggy Ansa right there with ten. Uh, Connor Barwin was up there. Calais Campbell was up there. Justin Houston, Sheldon Richardson, uh, Damon Harris. So definitely, man, the AFC sack totals are high. Two guys with ten or more. It's just crazy at this point of the season. Oddly enough, a middle backer, Luke Keekley, leads the AFC in interceptions with six. Janoris Jenkins chips in with four, and then you got a bunch of people tied with three. Uh, one of those bunch of people tied will be Josh Norman. He plays for the Dolphins. I drafted that guy. I'm just saying. I'm just throwing facts out here, y'all. I'm not making this up. This is just facts, right? Force fumbles. Who's over there causing the stir? Okay, Nevin Lawson over there forced two. Wait, was that four? Oh, I'm tripping. I'm tripping. Let's see who scores some touchdowns. Oh, we got about five people to score a touchdown. I see Jalen Ramsey, David Harris. Keep coming down. Watch this right here. Come on, one more. William Moore, Dolphins. I drafted that guy. I'm just saying. And we're going to look at some kick returners, man. Julian Edelman's name popped up. That that cracked my side right there. Javier Arenas leads the AFC in uh, kick return yards. He looks pretty good. Let's see who it, Somebody got Earl Thomas returning kicks. Man, you bold. The way injuries are out here, ain't no way I had that man out there returning kicks. But what do I know? I mean, I'm just a genius. Let's see who... Who's taking these things to the house? That's what we want to know. We go over and look at touchdowns for the AFC. It's only been two taken to the house. Okay. And one of them is Julian Edelman. My bad, Julian. I see you putting in work. We go look at the punt returners over here. You see a familiar name, man. Ted Ginn Jr. He's a speedster. We know that. You see he's taking one to the house. So we might as well jump over there. Let's see how many people in the AFC has returned a punt to the house. To my surprise, just one. Ted Ginn. Let's go over and let's look at some NFC stuff because these stats are going to be so different. It's crazy. Let's start off with passing. That's what we do. Aaron Rodgers leads the NFC in passing yards. He has thrown the football 313 times, though. Like, they got this man slinging the pigskin, y'all. Slinging the pigskin. Jay Cutler was on the first page. Kirk Cousins was on the first page. Blake Bortles was on the first page. My God. Touchdowns, touchdowns. Blake Bortles leads the NFC in touchdown passes. He's got a 19 to 4 ratio. Looks pretty good over there. Much to my surprise. See some familiar names up there. Teddy Bridgewater's having a great season for the Falcons to be so bad. I just can't figure it out. We want to see who leads the NFC in picks. Aaron Rodgers and a few other people tied with seven. I want you to look at the numbers up here and realize that Trevor Simeon has not thrown, he's probably thrown 100 less passes than Aaron Rodgers. Got the same amount of INTs. Andy Dalton as well. Let's see sacks. Remember over there, we had somebody with 29 sacks. Cam Newton leads the NFC. He's only been sacked 19 times. So, looks like the defense is either better in the AFC or the offensive lines are better. Y'all let me know which one you think it is. We jump over to rushing. Who's doing work? Look at this. Matt Forte. Zeke Elliott, LaShawn McCoy. Look, LaShawn is averaging seven yards a pop. I thought we just saw his name on the injury list. So if he wasn't injured, he probably would be shattering the NFC in Russia. 
D'Angelo Williams leads the NFC in touchdowns on the ground. He's got eight. Matt Forte chips in with seven. Le'Veon Bell right there with him. You see some other familiar names. C.J. Anderson, that's that's a bit of a shock. Let's see who is putting the, the football on the field up. Who, who's fumbling? D'Angelo Williams, that's who. He's got two. A few people got two. Melvin Gordon, we see you up there too, fam. We see you. We ain't even going to look at broke tackles over here. We jump straight to wide receivers. You got some big name receivers over here in the NFC and they putting in work. Now, AJ Green, I expect. Chris Hogan, I don't really expect to be second in receptions in the NFC. We see T.Y. Hilton. You skip a person to see Randall Cobb. Both of these guys play for the Falcons, so the receivers look great. Teddy Bridgewater looks great. Maybe their defense just can't stop anybody. I don't know. The first tight end you see on the receiving list on the NFC is Jimmy Graham. Greg Olsen on the AFC side. Jimmy Graham over here. Both of those guys play for the University of Miami. I'm just saying. I'm just throwing out facts. Just facts. When we look at yards, man, A.J. Green is having a hell of a year. He's on his way to 1,000 yards receiving already. Got some good guys, you know, some good stats being put up down there. But, I mean, they they that's a huge jump. Like, you look at what everybody else is doing, and then you go to the top and look at A.J. Green. He, he is killing them. Getting in the end zone is a different story, though. Antonio Brown is doing that better than any other wide receiver in the NFC. He's almost got double-digit receiving touchdowns already. AJ still having a hell of a year, but, hey, he ain't getting in the end zone like old boy. And we got some names down there that's just kind of blowing my mind. I don't know how some of these teams are doing it. I really don't. Defensive side of things over here, who is making some tackles? I'll tell you who, Navarro Bowman. Now, remember on the AFC, that whole first page was middle backers? We got three outside backers leading in tackles on the NFC side. Uh, the first being KJ Wright. Then you see Michael Kendricks down there. You also see Shane Ray. So these guys are flying around. They're making plays. They're getting to the football. It was just strange to me to see, you know, how the stats was different from one conference to the next. You know, and all this talent been blended up, and it still looks like two completely different leagues almost. It's crazy. Tackles for a loss, man. I'm telling you, and Dominican Sue would have been a person I, I would have drafted if I had the opportunity to. His name is up there. That guy makes an impact. They laughed at me. Sacks, though. Y'all know we had two people in the AFC with 10 or more, right? Eight and a half is going to lead the NFC. Marcus Golden. Boast of the rookie over there still doing it, Grande. Seven and a half. And you got a few other people down there making big time plays as well. I mean, you know, they ain't doing it like the AFC. The AFC, man, we just it. I'm sorry. We it. Wherever you put me, going to be the best conference. Interceptions. Six led the AFC. That was Luke Keekley. Four is going to lead the NFC. That's Richard Sherman. At least it is a corner. Then you got a free safety, then you got a strong, then you got a middle backer. So, a lot of variety over here in the NFC. Pac-Man Jones is on the list, though. That's crazy. Desmond Trufant, Darius Slay, we see y'all. We see you. Let's see who's making plays over here. Who is forcing fumbles? Who's putting the, who's knocking, oh, I didn't want to see that. Damn, my bad. I guess when I was recording that, I didn't want to see that. Defensive touchdowns over here. We got a couple. We go to kick returns. It's crazy that I didn't record the same thing. I must have been out of my mind. Got some pretty good kick returners over here in the NFC. I see y'all. Y'all putting up yards. The biggest difference is I think only two people in the AFC got in the end zone. But over here, you can see double the amount. These guys over here getting to the end zone. And this guy, Will Fuller, not only has he taken a kick return to the house, the man is taking a punt return to the house as well. Tavon Austin, you expect to see him on that list. Tyler Lockett, you expect to see him on that list. But when you go look at touchdowns over there, only one guy, Will Fuller. Only one guy. So now I'm going to show you guys the player of the week, AFC and NFC, so far in this season. That's all I got for the video. I'm going to bless you guys with timestamps. You can jump right to the section that's most important to you. And always, man, fins up. Don't ever count me out, y'all. I'm a GM. I've been doing this shit. I know what's up. You know what I'm saying? I'm a G with it. Great Patriot. What's up with them Browns, homie? That's all I want to know. Hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you did, be sure to leave a like. If this is your first time watching or maybe you ain't done so yet, fam, go ahead and hit subscribe. I'm out the next time, y'all. Peace.